uh, and welcome to the regularly scheduled council meeting of February 13th. Happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. Uh, we, as we gather, we always just think, want to acknowledge that the land on which we're gathering is the traditional territories of the Coast and the Strait Salish peoples. Uh, specifically, we recognize the Lekwungen peoples, known today as the Esquimalt and the Songhees Nations, and that their historic connections to these lands and the adjoining waters continue to this day. Uh, we have up first approval of the agenda. Moved. Seconded, thank you. Any discussion, changes, corrections? Nope. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? Uh, we have adoption of the minutes of February 6th for approval. Moved and seconded. Any changes, corrections, amendments? Not seeing any hands popping up. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? Thank you. Um, uh, Mayor's remarks will be very brief tonight, uh, but I would, if anybody is online, I don't think there is, but if you're listening on the live stream, this is the time to call into the one eight five five number to address us in the public participation period, uh, and we'll get to you in the next section, which will start in about a minute. Um, at first, I just wanted to uh, express my appreciation. There's a, late in this agenda, just for receipt, is a, is a letter from the province. They're, uh, they're sharing a, a billion dollars in surplus to municipalities, and I just... We don't know what our portion of that is, but uh, it certainly allows us a uh, both you know a substantial amount of money, no matter what it is. But also, uh, they're giving it with the understanding that municipalities know their own needs, and uh, so usually we have to go through a very cumbersome and often lengthy and uncertain grant application process. And this is just a very nice to see um, that level of trust and and, and dis uh, dispensation of that. Um, there is also coming up this Thursday, uh, and Councilor Braith, but you have to remind me of the name of it. The I think it's a Sip and Sparkle. Sip and Sparkle, which is happening in the uh, in the Esteban Village uh, in the evening, a sort of a, a come together of that part of the of the community. Um, uh, yeah, so those are primary my, my comments for tonight. I just want to make sure people are uh, there, and we're going to move from there to the public comment and question period, uh, as noted. This is a chance for anybody in the public that can just address council on any items of interest. If you're here or online to speak to us about any of the agenda items, then this is not the time. We will call on the public for participation at that time. Um, and I don't, so if you're calling into the 1855 number, you have to hit the star nine to raise your hand. It's not pound nine, it is star nine, and that flags it. But I don't see people called in in our system here. Mr. Dowling, I don't see any of them. Okay, uh, I'll give it another few seconds here in case anybody in the audience is... No? All right, in that case, we'll move on to the reports and memorandums portion of the agenda. Uh, the first up, we have an award of tender for 2023 Dalhousie Street, a sanitary sewer replacement. Uh, we have Mr. Robertson, a director of uh, engineering and public works with us. Welcome, Mr. Robertson. Good evening, thanks. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, present the report uh, recommending that uh, the award of tender for uh, Dahousie Street sewer project replacement project um, be received and uh, that the uh, contract uh, be awarded as well. Just for some background. Um, this project uh, originally went to tender in mid-2022 and um, the tenders were not, uh, the contract wasn't awarded um, as the bids came in uh, well over the estimate and the budget that was in place. As staff looked at the project um, to determine the next steps, um, the decision was made to increase the scope uh, to add another block in and to increase the amount of uh, pipe that we were installing in the ground and also to def better define the contaminated soils that were on site and thereby reducing the risk uh, to those who were going to submit bids. The tender was uh, issued um, again later in 2022 and closed in December of 2022. There were seven bids received and uh, just of note is the uh, the date uh, for the cutoff for award is uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Staff are recommending the contract be awarded to Northridge Excavating uh, for the total of three million fifty thousand five hundred and thirty four dollars and eighty seven cents based on this being the best value for the district. 
and I realize there's been uh, there's been some discussion about uh, potential changes to the project of uh, adding trees and I'm prepared to answer questions regarding that thank you uh, thank you mr. Robertson so first we'll go to questions and then we can get to motions uh, with the questions of mr. Robertson yeah, go ahead councillor green Thank you, Mayor, and through you to Mr. Robertson, thank you very much. Um, and I, I was going to raise the question of trees. As we know, some of the residents have been uh, reaching out to Council, Mayor and Council, asking about increasing the tree canopy on Dalhousie. I, I just wondered if you had a, any comments on that that might be helpful, or it may be out, it's certainly outside the purview of, of the tender, I realize that, but thank you. Yeah, Mr. Robertson? Yes, through the Mayor. Um, yeah, it is outside of the, the scope of this tender. Um, however, as we've looked at the project in the last few days uh, and speaking with my colleagues in parks, there is the opportunity that in the existing alignment and although the boulevards are small on both sides that we could add uh, potentially up to six trees at least um, taking out some of the sidewalk panels to to be able to plant in that area and be successful and then reinstating the sidewalk. Uh, there may be some other opportunities, but we would have to look at it closer and we would do that uh, not or outside of this, uh, this tender or in addition to, the, uh, to the, well, the project that's been tendered. Thank you for that, Mr. Robertson. Go ahead, Councilor Green. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Are there other questions of Mr. Robertson? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Smart to Councillor Patterson. Uh, through you, Mayor, just a question with regards to adding the six trees. Was there a sense of uh, additional cost that would come in adding those trees? And is that something that needs to be discussed as part of, of this decision? Uh, Mr. Robertson, I, I would suggest that that would be discussed either as a motion arising or perhaps uh, being put forward to the budget process to, for consideration, but uh, Mr. Robertson? Through the Mayor, um, there would be um, some additional cost uh, which we may uh, add as an extra to the contract uh, once it's awarded. Um, we don't anticipate the cost for those would be substantial. Thank you, Mr. Robertson. Uh, go ahead to Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mayor, and through you to our Director of Engineering. Thank you very much for the report um, and some of the explanations about the project. I know the project was delayed because of um, uh, staff's desire to uh, contain risks by identifying more of the um, implications for the project itself. So I'm just wondering. Um, Obviously, those have been incorporated into this retender, and the scope of the work has increased. But um, what is the potential risk and um, still as yet higher increased pricing for unknown conditions? I realize that uh, it, there is still uncertainty to this, so um, the, the project could conceivably still have a higher cost than even what is in the tender. So how, how, is, how are we containing that? or um, understanding that is it like a unit cost or whatever. I'll go to our Deputy Director of Engineering, uh, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to the Council. This contract is a unit price contract, and so it is made up of quantities for the various types of work, and they have unit rates, and those quantities can increase if there is more of that type of work, or they can decrease if there is less of that type of work specifically addressing the contaminated soils was a risk because if the soils are not contaminated, they can be disposed of in the capital region, but if they are contaminated, they have to be taken over the Malahat. And so in the break between tendering it as just a one phase of a larger project and the second tender process, what we did is we hired a consultant to do test pits along the entire project alignment so that we could better characterize the quantity of contaminated soil. Now, sorry, frog in my throat. You'll never know for 100% certainty how much contamination there is until you open it up and start digging, but we feel that we have captured a fairly reasonable estimate for what that quantity is. 
So while it is possible that the cost could still go up beyond what has been um, requested, it would be within the threshold that we would expect these these projects to vary. Um, typically, you know, we're not looking at a, a doubling the cost um, if, if that helps. Go ahead, Councilor Patterson. Yes, thank you for that information. That's really helpful. Um, I think one question that most of the people, particularly residents who live adjacent to where the work will take place, what is the project start? ideally start and completion dates? I usually give direction, but you both are both kind of looking at each other like you don't want to take the question. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mayor, through you to the council. The intention, as Director Robertson noted, would be to give notice to proceed to the successful bidder tomorrow, which will allow them to begin their mobilization. Because there's been a bit of a delay between the tender closing and us giving the award, um, we would need to ask for a revised schedule. We certainly would expect the project to be entirely completed by the end of this year, and we would be much more communicative with the residents for the specifics, because I realize saying that a project that starts February 15th won't be done until the end of the year is not particularly helpful. So that is information that we would need to discuss with the successful bidder. Go ahead, Councilor Patterson. And uh, just um, as, as a follow-up, should residents um, wonder about, as the project is ongoing and they have any concerns or questions, um, where would they direct those to? Do we have um, a champion for this project, uh, uh, somebody that will be handling all the requests? Mr. Rennick. Uh, through you, Mayor, all communications on all projects would be championed through corporate communications, through the Corporate Services Department, and they would be provided all of the up-to-minute information from the member of the engineering team who is overseeing the project. Thank you. And I believe this would be engineering in the last couple of years have taken on project. Uh, so uh, for the members of the public watching, if you're ever curious, uh, you can go to the engineering site and look up projects. And we try and keep uh, project updates happening on that, uh, that central site as well. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, thanks very much, Mayor. And, and just going back to um, the uh, the question about the trees, um, I'm assuming, and I, and I know that we wouldn't know um, what the pricing or anything like that would be, but uh, I'm I'm wondering whether that should be um, added to our strategic priorities. Um, and does that add a lot of time? Um, would there be a lot of time, a staff time that would be involved in figuring out how to actually do that? And is that something that because um, I'm very cognizant of the time that staff is spending on other projects, um, and I know that we're, we're we try not to add too much on. But would that be something that would be adding a, a, a bigger project on to staff time than what we should be? Go ahead, Mr. Robertson. Yes, uh, through the mayor. Um, yeah, it's certainly a consideration. Uh, we've had some discussions over the past week about. Uh, developing with uh, or parks developing um, you know a detailed tree inventory um, and identifying locations for infill and then we would be able to incorporate that into our designs like as we're looking at each street um, and so I think that's from what I understand that's something that they have on their radar to to implement and that would make the planning for us easier for sure Thank you. Uh, any other? Just yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll go to first time speakers first. Go ahead, Councillor Watson, and then Appleton. Yes, thank you. Through you, Mayor, to Mr. Robertson. Uh, if you could just clarify um, for us and, and for the public, when we have this discussion about trees and possibly six trees, we are only talking about one segment of Dalhousie, correct? We're not talking about the entire uh, run of the of the or the two the two whole blocks. Mr. Robertson. Through the mayor, yes, this is uh, just for the 2200 block. The 2400 block um, does have a lot of trees on it already, so it's just for this uh, the second block. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Thank you, Worship, and through you to staff. And just for the for the benefit of the public and and their awareness of the of the project, the 
the sanitary sewer replacement that's contemplated here does not necessarily include it was it was not scoped out and nor did it did, was it designed to include an entire reconstruction of the entire municipal easement it's something that's confined to the essentially the roadbed to do the infrastructure that's sort of like one question and as, and as such that's part one and then part two is so as such the project once it's complete does not necessarily restrict or or impinge on any further or on any future reconstruction of the municipal boulevard go ahead mr robertson through the mayor that's correct in the 2200 block the sewer main is the only uh, the only infrastructure we'll be putting in and connections any connections we have to follow back towards uh, property line so we expect to be within um, the, the paved area and not dealing with the curb and gutter and uh, and sidewalk uh, 2400 block is the opposite will be that'll be a total reconstruction because there's asphalt sidewalks in there and uh, they're not in great shape um, certainly uh, this work won't preclude um, future uh, potential for a street st streetscape it's hard to say um, redesign um, and we we expect we'll have uh, other um, infrastructure work to be doing on that block sometime in the future. So that certainly doesn't close the door that you know we won't be back there in a long time. There's the opportunity to. Thank you for that. Um, thanks. And before I go back to second time speakers, I just want to go and just for my clarification that I guess the other issue here on the 2200 block, as I understand it, is it the same on the 2400 block where there's very narrow. Uh, easements in front of these houses or is, it, is that the entire street or is it just the 2200 block that's has that restriction mr robertson yes the 2400 block has a wider boulevard um, area and 2200 block is quite a narrow boulevard a little narrower on one side i can't remember which side than the other um, so it's a little a little more difficult to put the trees in but we'll be able to do that with the, well with the help of parks Leave that to parts. Uh, I had Councillor Smart, and then we'll go to Councillor Braithwaite. My questions were already answered. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. I'm just going to move receipt. This is re this is receipt of the reports. Uh, any discussion on that? Seeing any, all those in favor? Any opposed? Unopposed? Go ahead. <clears throat> and then I'll move the recommendation that uh, the tender submission goes to North Rid North Ridge Excavating for the amount of three million. Fifty thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars and eighty-seven cents. For a seconder, moved and seconded. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment that in my, my this is my fifteenth year on council. I have never made a motion for that amount of money before, so this is historic. So there you go. And yet we wish it was lower. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Worship. And just and just further to, and I agree with Councillor Braithwaite, but further to those comments, I think it might be useful for staff to comment for the benefit of the public. Um, I think that, and it, it is outlined to a certain extent in the report, but um, I think that, like it is with most things, uh, you know, inflationary costs and, and economic costs have driven up the, the you know, the, the cost of these things significantly over original. And I think the council recognizes that, but I guess it might be useful for staff to comment is that moving forward, it would be the, I guess, our expectation that these would be the budget, that we're going to need to budget around these new numbers, essentially, that, you know, we're, we're living in a, uh, in a different world now as far as budgeting for uh, infrastructure upgrades this this is the current standard for costs associated with this type of project would you agree mr. Rennick uh, thank you mayor through you to council I think that that's a, a complicated question that doesn't have just a simple answer to it while it is true that there are new realities in terms of labor is more expensive fuel and materials are more expensive um, this project in particular, the sewer is quite deep. Uh, I believe in places it's about two and a half meters deep. I uh, don't have the plans in front of me, but it is a fair bit deeper than a lot of our other sewers. And so that does add complexity as well as having to deal with these potentially contaminated soils. So I would say that while I, I agree with the concept that there will likely be other projects in the $3 million range, I would hesitate to say that the 
dollars per meter from this project will be what we budget going forward. Thank you for that, Mr. Rennick. Go ahead, uh, Councilor Green, and then Councilor Patterson. Thank you, and I just want to say, um, and I agree, these are big numbers, but it was last term that this council, some of, some of this council, the majority of this council, the members are still here at the table, made the first real commitment to supporting and investing in infrastructure, and this is why. And it is an expensive area, but, you know, Oak Bay's infrastructure, some of it's over 100 years old, so I, I'm, I'm proud of some of the decisions we took last term, and, and this council clearly is still committed to making those investments. So it is a lot of money, but it's important. Thanks. Thanks. Go ahead, Councillor Smart. Oh, sorry, Councillor Patterson and then Smart. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And I, like others at the Council table, I um, am very pleased to see the project starting. I may be the only person at the Council table that gets excited about sewers being done, but I've been working on this for a long time. Um, however, the, um, the, the budgeting for this uh, and, and the the contribution of money comes from a variety of sources in the budget, and the staff that is with it not, tonight may not be able to answer this. But um, so because the price is higher than originally anticipated, and because it comes from a variety of sources throughout our budget, it will affect not just one. It won't affect just the capital project. It'll feed down into all of all of those other layers. And so I guess I'm wondering on um, how that how that gets reported out and and conveyed to us so that um, we can kind of understand it in the scope of one single project rather than saying for each one, well, some of it is coming from the operational part of the sewers in this and whatnot. I'm, I'm wondering if and we have any thoughts about how this will be reported on. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. We do have uh, Mr. Payne here, Director of Finance, is with us. Uh, welcome, Mr. Payne. I'm, you're probably the best suited to answer that question. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, three, three to Council. Um, typically, our financial reporting is done um, by program area, as uh, Councillor Patterson correctly pointed out. So we report out um, how much uh, storm main we've, we've constructed in the year, how much pavement management, how much sanitary sewer, um, however, for a project this size, it's um, more prudent to uh, to report out on a project by project basis. So we certainly can uh, do that in this case. And I think that will be important because you may find, uh, let's say the sanitary sewer component goes over, but the storm drain component goes under. And th those variants need to be taken into consideration in terms of the full scope of the project. So um, that certainly can be incorporated into our quarterly budget reporting um, now and thereafter. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Thank you. Uh, I have Councillor Smart on the motion. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, through you, just a, a quick commenting question. Um, just appreciate the uh, pivoting from um, engineering and parks on finding a, a solution um, for the cool kit aspect going forward. There was one other aspect in the letter writing uh, beyond trees that I just wanted to touch on with a question, which is there was a question of aiming to meet the 2012 complete streets policy. And I wondered for the areas on the street um, that are having curb and gutter done, um, could engineering um, um, educate us on the process of when um, those greater um, policies are looked at as opposed to like when decisions are made about widening sidewalks and, and such? Thank you. I'll give that to Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor, to Council. The 2400 block of Dalhousie is the one that is having new sidewalk replaced. And as Director Robertson noted, uh, the existing sidewalk is quite narrow and it's asphalt. And uh, what will be going back in will be wider than what there was before. I believe we're going from 1.2 meters to 1.5. And uh, what we do in these kinds of projects is we just take a look and see does what's existing meet our modern standards? And in that case, it does not. And is there an opportunity to widen the sidewalk without having significant trade-offs? Um, and that was a decision that we were able to operationalize because if it had been a situation where we were looking at making larger changes that would have impacted on-street parking or would have added significant costs, that's something that would have come back to the council table. But in this particular instance, it was, well, it doesn't meet the standards. Here's an opportunity to, to bump it up. So that's what we did. Thank you. 
Oh, go ahead, Councillor Smart. You saw the floor. Um, just one follow-up question, then through you, Mayor. Um, when situations came come up where it would be a little bit more complicated, would those things, would you bring those things back to council typically if they um, didn't, uh, if you were trying to meet the objectives of um, the complete streets policy? Mr. Rennick? Uh through you, Mayor. I would need to have a quick refresher on the complete streets policy just to make sure that we're 100% comfortable on what decisions could be operationalized versus what what decisions would be governance questions. Thank you, Mr. Rennick. I'm going to just extend that question to if if it had a material difference in terms of cost that would typically come before council if that was if that came back. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, the motion is on the floor. So any other discussion? I think all questions have been answered, so I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed? Uh, thank you, staff, for bringing this back and for that work. Uh, good luck with the project. Uh, one thing I do appreciate is there's been a lot of work as it was brought up in the topic of communication, and that's a really critical part of our success on these things. So looking forward to seeing that going forward. Uh, we have next a public works flusher truck replacement. We have Mr. Brozick who's our superintendent of public works with us. Um, Mr. Brozick, are you providing the introduction for this item? Sure. Very good, welcome. Uh, yes, through you, your worship. Um, so about two and a half years ago, we started looking at uh, planning to replace our flusher truck. Uh, different pieces of equipment were evaluated. We looked at single axle, double axle, all different sizes. Um, in 2021, at the beginning of it, uh, prices for a new unit were about 485 485,000 um, a year later um, jumping up to about 585 and this uh, just in uh, November here budgetary estimates from suppliers have it at about 690 so prices have just skyrocketed um, um, talking to the suppliers a lot of it just has to do with the supply chain um, bef these big pieces of equipment you start with the chassis the chassis gets built before covid you know the pump component that would go into the the vector unit they would have 24 of them on the shelf and would be able to get it from their supplier easily i'm told now that it's uh, very difficult to, ha to find any of these little components in stock so prices have just skyrocketed um so price is going up 40 percent in uh just over two years. Um, we've uh, kept our eyes and ears open for other options. And Vermeer, the uh, company which is licensed to sell Vactors here in British Columbia, had a uh, unit available, um, two years old, from the city of Vancouver. The city of Vancouver was converting all of their trucks to natural gas units. And they had this loaner truck for two years while their natural gas units were being built. So it's a pretty good opportunity um, to have such a young aged uh, machine coming available. So I recommend that uh, we purchase this one. Thank you, Mr. Brozick. Uh, I have questions, so I'll go to Councillor Green, then Councillor Brickgate. Thank you, Marin, through you to Mr. Brozick. Thank you very much. Uh, is this two-year-old vehicle, it would be a diesel engine that yeah. powers it, diesel? Yes. And how many hours do you know, um, Mr. Brozak? So total kilometers are um, 22,576. Drive hours are 1,000. Road hours are 519. Jetting hours are 381 and the combo unit hours are 499. Sorry, the only reason I'm asking, <laughs> we used to have diesel boats, so I know a little bit about the hours and, and so, but it, it doesn't sound out of, untoward, certainly. And a two year old unit, it's good value, I think, as you say. Um, things have skyrocketed, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, thanks very much, and, and uh, kudos to staff for finding a, a one that's in, in this shape um, or a two-year-old one rather than having to buy brand new. But my question is, is there any warranty on this at all, or has the warranty expired, or will they give us a warranty because we're, it's new to us? Or Mr. Brozick? Um, r right now, we haven't worked that into this price. Um, once the deal goes through, I'm going to try to get at least a one-year extension on the warranty. Um, but 
we'll see we'll evaluate how much it is and whether it's a, a, a good deal for this unit uh, we have had the units um, here in uh, public works since uh, the beginning of January and our mechanics have gone over it extensively and they feel that it's uh, a very solid machine thank you great Councilor Patterson Thank you, and thank you for that information, Mr. Brozak. Um, just, I, I, I have to, um, because the city of Vancouver is changing over to natural gas, um, it's obvious that they are making the decision to do that to meet some of their environmental um, targets that they have. And so, um, I guess the question is, how long is this unit expected? In expected to last in Oak Bay, and are there um, energy or environmental um, improvements to this over our last piece of equipment? The life of this, this machine is probably the right now at probably about eight to ten years. Um, you start replacing them after about ten years. Our existing flusher truck is at ten years, and we're starting to see the significant breakdowns. Uh, when it comes to natural gas versus the diesel, um, talking to people that have actually purchased natural gas ones, and there's very few that have, the power output for what you actually need to do is, is significantly lower, and most people currently aren't switching over to natural gas, uh, just uh, Vancouver and some very um, few other places. Uh, I hear Councillor Braith go into that, so Councillor Watson. Thank you, Mayor. Through you to Mr. Bozak. Just a quick question about maintenance, because you, you mentioned it. Uh, if we acquire this vehicle, is this something that our own mechanics maintain, so we can do that in-house? Yes, yes. Um, okay, thank you. I'll move receipt. Moved and seconded. Yep, that's fine. Uh, we have a motion on the floor for receipt. Any discussion on the motion? All in favour? Any opposed? None opposed. Thank you. Uh, oh, we do have subject to public input, so I should make sure. Thank you for that. Um, before we get to the main motion here, is there anybody from the public who wishes to address us on the matter of the flusher truck? I was pre-anticipating not a huge public input on this one, so... So I'll make the recommend. I'm recommend just going to give it a second, just in case there's anybody online who wishes to address us, but other than that, I'm going to move to the, to the motion. Go ahead, Councillor. I'll move uh, the staff recommendation that uh, we replace the existing flusher unit from Bymar Equipment for a total of $452,527 plus taxes. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Smart. I really appreciate um, finding this um, amazing situation, but I do want to echo um, Councillor Patterson's comments and, and just say, you know, going forward, it would be great um, when we don't have a unique situation like this to see environmentally friendly alternatives that we can um, compare in future situations. Very good. Don't see other discussion. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. Thank you. We are moving on to item 6.3. Uh, we know we have some members of the public who wish Also, just have one member of council who wishes to recuse herself. Go ahead, Councillor Smart. Yeah, I wish to recuse myself for a non-pecuniary com uh, perceived conflict of interest as my, um, I have a family member who's on the board of the Virtual Tennis Club. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smart. We'll just give you a moment to leave the room and then we'll... those who aren't familiar with our wonderful language, the pecuniary, non-pecuniary basically is a non-monetary interest, but just a, a sufficient, a unique interest to, uh, to warrant a, a, an abundance of caution to step outside. Uh, so with that, we, uh, we have the Oak Bay Tennis Bubble Heating Upgrade. Uh, procedurally, for those in the room, just so you know where you stand, uh, or anybody online, uh, we're going to get a staff overview. We'll take questions, and then before we get to a motion, we'll get a public input, and then we'll, we'll have a, a motion arising out of this piece. So with that, we have Mr. Meikle, our Director of Oak Bay Parks, Recreation and Culture, with us tonight. Welcome. Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, through you to Council. Uh, so we have... Um, 
looking to receive the bids and uh, award the contract for the upgrade of the tennis bubble he <coughs> excuse me heating replacement uh, to MGM mechanical as per the report so a bit of an overview um, generally within our operations heating and heating issues are one of those uh, concerns or issues that we're often able to address internally or through our operating budget uh, this uh, has been a particular challenge as, as many will allude to and has taken us a uh, number of years to actually determine the best way forward here. So I'll give you a brief overview of, of what that looks like. Started uh, pre, just pre-pandemic with uh, some moisture condensation issues in the three-quart bubble. Uh, we were still receiving some heat into that bubble but uh, could not actually, took us a while to determine where that moisture was coming from and it was actually impacting the playing surface at that time. So after some investigation and uh, shutting the heat off, we determined that uh, it was connected to the heating tunnel and the, the system was set up so that uh, the primary heat source is located in the larger bubble, the forecourt bubble, uh, and heat was transferred underground literally through a tunnel, a pipe, a large pipe, uh, into the three-quart bubble. That pipe had cracked, had failed, and uh, moisture was getting in there. So the more heat we were drawing into the three-quart bubble, it was bringing significant moisture with it. So in that process, we took a look at uh, how we could repair that tunnel. We looked at a number of options, including a sleeve or a pipe within a pipe, if you like, uh, to see if that would work and uh, was determined through some engineering work that uh, that would still draw condensation into the three-quart bubble. Uh, during this time, we also, it was middle of the pandemic and budgets were uncertain and we, we did put a few things on hold at that time, including uh, taking a larger look into this project, um, just given the uncertainty within our budgets. So uh, after that point, we also took a look at uh, setting up a, I guess you could say a standalone heating system within the three-quart bubble, so mimicking what was in the four-quart bubble. Uh, only to learn that the electrical load within that uh, facility was insufficient to support another uh, standalone heating project and the, the cost to upgrade that electric uh, electrical load in that facility was rather significant, larger than where we're sitting today. So um, back to the drawing board we went, uh, hired engineering consultants to, I should also mention, sorry, that that uh, other system, a standalone system, also would have increased our energy consumption above that existing system that we had. So we'd be uh, adding operational costs and adding, uh, decreasing our energy efficiency overall in the building. So went back to engineering consultants to design this current system. Um, and pleased to say we've come up with a system that's uh, connected to the main building and the main building's electricity. Uh, and we're actually utilizing, would be utilizing heat that would otherwise be dissipated into the air uh, from the pool plant operations. So heating and uh, disinfecting the, the water for the pool. Um, so those are the design specifications that went to tender in December. Uh, we certainly, I'll, I'll mention, uh, appreciate the patience of our tennis community. It's been a, a long, complex process uh, for all of us and uh, certainly know the risks in, in having cooler, cold temperatures in that building. Uh, certainly, um, for some, it's not a, an ideal playing atmosphere and, uh, and does carry some, some concerns in terms of potential injuries in a colder environment. So uh, that's where we're at and uh, looking to award the bid from there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Meikle. Are there questions of Mr. Meikle at this time? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. Thank you, Mayor, and through you to Mr. Meikle. Um, so the condensation issues, um, uh, do those continue? And if so, how, how, how damaging, or if we let them continue, how damaging um, would they be? And do, do, they, do they affect the playing surface? Like, do they make it wet so then slippery? And then is that a liability to us? Michael? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you to uh, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, my understanding is that the moisture issues have greatly diminished since we've turned the heat off and we're not heating that uh, uh, the building in the same manner, so it, it's a bit of been a bit of a trade-off. We uh, address the moisture issues, but lose the heat and have have that issue. Um, those buildings, uh, the the skin, if you like, of those bubbles do create some condensation as it is. There's there's a thin layer of insulation between uh, two sheets of uh, vi what's vinyl polyester. Um, so it's not great insulating factors uh, in those buildings. So there is some condensation. Uh, but my understanding is that's been 
very minimal since since we turned the heat off we were taking cleaning water consistently when we had the the major issue with the heater when we first discovered this issue with the heat going through towels etc to clean the clean the water issue so over time it would have created an issue on the floor yes and then just one more question in regards to the solution that you've come up with um, for this. Um, it sounds like a great solution. So then we're, um, are, we're, in, we're increasing our energy efficiency, so thereby decreasing our greenhouse gas emissions. Is, is that correct? Oh. Mr. Uh Yes, thank you, Your Worship, uh, through you to Council. Uh, yeah, the estimated um, amount of greenhouse gas emissions, I believe, is about... Uh, Savings should be about 57 tons per year. Thank you. Are there other questions to Mr. Meikle? Go to Councillor Appleton. Thank you, Worship. A uh, couple of technical questions here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Meikle, for the, the background. Um, is through through you, Your Worship, was any uh, was part of the analysis of cost options for the bubble? Was one of those options decommissioning the bubble? Michael? Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you to Council. Uh, well, we, we took a look at it, not in, in the sense of uh, decommissioning, but in the sense of uh, the, the risk of if we could not fix it and players stopped playing in that bubble, what uh, the associated uh, risk of, of losing that playing surface would be. So a little hard to calculate because we did manage to move things around to, to sort of fill and maximize use of the forecourt bubble as much as possible. And of course, temperature is one of those uh, subjective things. We do have players who are still willing to play in, in those temperatures. Um, and players, we still have players who are playing outdoors when it's dry at, at, during, through the winter. So, um, but certainly a lot less than, than we would have had in, in a heated facility. So we did not look at decommissioning, no. The demand is such that that, um, that would be a, a big loss for the community. Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Oh, thank you, Worship. Uh, just picking up on that, do we have a sense of what the estimated lifespan of the existing bubble is? Well, how much lifespan it has remaining? Mr. Meikle? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my understanding is we're um, in about year seven of uh, 22, I believe it is, or 22 to 25, so we think we're 15 to 18 years of the bubbles left. Councillor Appleton? Thank you, Worship. Just wondering, and, and that's it's good to hear that there's sufficient lifespan remaining, or potential lifespan remaining in the building. Uh, is our, If the bubble was not in place, is the current infrastructure and the current courts suitable for open-air use if the bubble wasn't covering them? Sorry, Mr. Miko, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through to Council. Uh, yes, it's the same surfacing that uh, is used out on our outdoor courts. So it, it certainly could be used uh, outdoors as well without the bubble. Thank you, Mr. Meikle. Anything else, Councillor Appleton? Just one further question, Your Worship. Thank you, and through you to staff. Um, what is the need? Just inquiring as to the nature of the the report, and and you had mentioned, Mr. Meikle, that the. The, uh, the new infrastructure proposes essentially a, a heat pumping system in from the main building. And I'm just kind of wondering what the nature of that infrastructure necessary is. Um, what, is what is the, uh, I guess, to, to what uh, level of installation is this, is this infrastructure? And is it something that, um, you know, is it, is it something that could potentially, you know, in, in, in the future, is it going to cause issues with potentially removing if it had to be, I guess? It's, uh, to try to get a handle on what the nature of that infrastructure looks like. Go ahead, Mr. Meikle. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Council. Uh, actually designed a system, so it's uh, primarily would be piping on the exterior of the main building. So along the Goldsmith Avenue, the uh, pool plant operations are on that side of the building, the Goldsmith Avenue side. Um, the piping would go, uh, haven't determined the exact location, but probably along the side and up across the roof there, and then over to the tennis bubble. The heat pumps themselves that those attach to and then uh, blow the air into the bubble would be located just inside of the bubble. So we're only piercing the bubble in a small location to put the pipe through to those heat pumps. 
Um, and the system is actually designed to give us some future flexibility that we could uh, draw heat from there into our indoor sports field as well in the future. So uh, we are looking at some potential other energy savings down the road in the way this system is designed. Thank you. Councillor Watson, did I see your hand? Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Through you to Mr. Miko. I'd just like to kind of continue along that line of questioning uh, from Councillor Appleton. Just to understand, I think you said the life expectancy of the bubble right now is maybe 25 years, 20 some, and we're sort of seven years into that. What's the life expectancy of the heating system that you're about to install? That's my first question. Mr. Miko? Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Council. Uh, we understand the, the life system of the heating. Uh, or the life cycle of the heating system would be longer than the bubbles at this point. It's about 25 to 30 years. Um, thank you. And if I may continue. So um, uh, it, the the system itself, though, would it be fair to say that e even if the bubble were replaced, you would you could maintain the system in the replacement bubble? Or would there maybe that infrastructure no longer be required for a subsequent th uh, three-quart bubble if it ended up in that spot? Go ahead, Mr. Beagle. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Council. Uh, our anticipation would be that we'd be able to continue to use this system if the, the bubble were to be replaced. Uh, and there's some potential complexities in, in how that gets looked at, but it, it could be as simple as replacing the bubble, the skin itself, and, and uh, the courts, everything else remains uh, as it is. It really depends on the, the state of the slab, so to speak, at that point, and what needs to be done with the groundwork uh, to make that decision further. Thank you. And then just one final thing, just sort of to understand, be because the, the cost of this is, for reasons that you've explained very well, has gone up so much when we now have the new system designed. I'd just like you, just so the public, the tennis playing public, the general public understands in sort of orders of magnitude, how does that cost compare to the other major capital costs that pertain to maintaining that bubble, specifically in relation to um, resurfacing? If you could just... Uh, you know, explain that please. Go ahead Mr. Meikle. Sure thank you Your Worship through to Council. Uh, generally and we've just resurfaced that uh, all seven courts um, last summer uh, and they were approximately 25,000 to 30,000 per court again depending on how many cracks etc needed to be fixed within within each court so we tend to average yeah in that 25 to 30,000 per court to resurface. Uh, and the indoor courts are resurfaced between every seven to eight years. Uh, so you would kind of look at it in that frame if uh, the lifespan of this heating system, which I understand we've just commented that that's longer than the lifespan of the bubble, but um, during the lifespan of the heating system, you're probably looking at resurfacing the court three to four times at least. Uh, so you're in the sort of similar ball ballpark. This system costs about $100,000 per court or just under thereabouts. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Go ahead, Councillor Green. Thank you, and through you to Mr. Meikle, thank you very much for the report and all the commentary. And I, I guess my, my question statement is that this heat pump system, though, is much more efficient and much greener than any other kind of heating source that could be installed in, in, because it is an actual heat pump um, methodology. Is that correct? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you to Council. That, that is my understanding, as well as the, um, and we're seeing this quite a, uh, sorry, I'll backtrack a little bit, we're seeing this quite a bit in, in operations of recreation centres where we're, uh, because there's two major plants that run in those, in recreation centres, one to run your ice or to create ice, your ice plant operation, and then the pool plant operation, which in the past have dissipated heat, essentially, so you're losing that heat to the atmosphere. Um, so, for example, in our ice plant operations, it's pretty common to recapture that heat uh, and use it to heat uh, domestic water. So we heat our showers, hot water. Um, many of them will actually funnel that heat back into the change rooms for the arena, for example. Um, so this is capturing that dissipated heat off of our pool plant operations, streaming that through the, the pipes and into uh, a heat pump system. So it adds that uh, another, what I understand, is another level of efficiency to it. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Patterson. And yes, thank you, Mayor, and through you to um, Mr. Meikle. Uh, I believe you, you also um, stated that the with the um, 
efficiency of this. There's certainly savings of greenhouse um, emissions, which it is, is good. But there's also um, about a 38 percent reduction in expands. So, um, and that would be uh, presumably for for gas and electrical um, savings, and those costs are going to rise. So, so if we're that turns out to about almost 13,000 a year in in savings for that. So, um, while it doesn't offset entirely the cost, especially the cost of the money over time, um, but I I guess. With costs being high, and given the age of our facilities and the need to constantly upgrade them, are we focused on understanding what the recoveries are from the different centers? Because certainly we do charge fees for for the use of these. So is there a way that we will be refining that process of having a better understanding of of what is recovered and what is financed through the district for the different segments of the um, recreation centers. Mr. Meikle. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you to Council. Uh, if I may ask for clarification there too, but I think um, where you're heading with this is, uh, in general, yes, there we are looking to continue to capitalize, if you like, on opportunities to build in energy efficiencies in, in the way the buildings are run. Uh, we have a project coming up next year, which is uh, replacing the dehumidifier in the pool. Uh, and so we've actually entered into a process with uh, Fortis and to do a Fortis energy audit, uh, which will give us some more exact readings and more exact measurements of uh, some of those changes that will come as we upgrade and update various components of the building. Um, and hope we're hoping along with that will come some grant opportunities into the future. Um, this particular project didn't, didn't fit with Fortis's um, parameters at this time, but uh, we're hoping into the future uh, some of those other ones, and we think the pool dehumidifier will certainly fit with uh, Fortis's uh, grant opportunities, but you need to jump into doing the, the energy audit to begin with to give you that baseline uh, those baseline measurements and then be able to track their granting system is um, partially based on projected savings and in gas usage, et cetera. So uh, we are looking at that and continue to investigate that for the future. So don't see other questions. I just have one brief question, then we'll go to the members of the public to, for comments. Uh, I guess first, thank you. Thank you for bringing this forward. I guess I hadn't quite realized how many, how long this has been going on. So it's nice to have it in front of us. Um, just for my clarification on the conversation around interior versus exterior, do you have a sense of the different utilization rates for the interior versus the exterior? Like how many rounds get played per year on an interior court versus the exterior courts? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you, we, um, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Um, our understanding is, you know, really you're taking a population and the whole population will and we, we tend to see this just anecdotally in the usage of the building. Come April, May, they will move outside and play, and come October, they'll move inside and play. So um, I would say it's fairly equitably split between the two. Uh, we do still, during the summer, the bubbles are very well used. That's primarily, we run all our summer camps and uh, kids programs in the bubble. And you know certainly at that, uh, during the summer, it, it lends that other piece of, keeping children out of the heat and, and in some shade and uh, so it acts as a different kind of barrier in the summer um, but we do operate uh, our children's programs and that of course is your next generation of tennis players uh, so it's it's I don't have and the other piece with that is our um, outdoor courts aren't all people don't book all the time for outdoor courts they will just go and play so we don't getting stats statistics for outdoor play is a little more challenging um, in terms of bookings and rentals of the courts, our indoor courts are much more well utilized. Um, as I said, just because there's there's tends to be more free use of, of play on the outdoor courts. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Miko. Um, we'll see the questions at this point, so I'm happy to welcome members of the public who wish to come and address council. I believe somebody submitted pictures, so I think we have those with us. Just if you're going to refer to them, we have them circulated at our table. So. Yeah, please. Uh, so, just pull, pull yourself up. Uh, this is uh, this is actually Tommy Douglas's old desk. So we haven't quite refinished it yet, but it's uh, I know. Is this his constituency desk from his Winnipeg days, or his Saskatchewan days, I should say? 
And uh, so, uh, welcome. I just procedurally, we say just if you could just ask for your name, just the municipality of your residence. You have to give your address, and then uh, typically uh, ask for about three minutes. But you can we have a bit of flexibility on that time as well to address council. So just yep, turn your mic on. Perfect. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, with you, Mayor Murdoch and Council. My name is Catherine Riel. I live at 1171 Hollis Road. That's in Saanich. And I'd like to give a first-hand account as to what it's like to be a tennis player and uh, what it's like playing in the Oak Bay three-court bubble. I have been a tennis player for about 20 years, and I've been playing in the Oak Bay facility for about 15 years. I brought the two photos with me because we all know that a picture does tell a thousand words. And um, I've also brought some enlargements just in case that's not clear enough. Um, but I think that this really will provide me with uh, some very interesting thoughts about the insufficient heating problem in the three-quart bubble. Uh, the temperature in that three-quart bubble is significantly colder than it, what, it, what it's like outside. Um, these very cold conditions happen for about nine months out of the year. From about September all the way through May, the temperature is so cold that, as you can see in these photos, people need several layers of clothing, as well as gloves and mitts, and even long down jackets, in order to sufficiently play in an environment that's warm enough. These temperatures actually make it quite hazardous for our conditions. And those hazards actually include a risk of injury. Our muscles tighten and stiffen, and in the cold, it's more likely that we'll slip and fall. Uh, there's also a decreased performance because the cold reduces our dexterity, our reaction time, and our overall mobility to get to the ball. We also sometimes experience breathing difficulties because in very cold temperatures and when you're trying to run around, it's difficult to breathe. And this is specifically for those who suffer with breathing difficulties or even asthma. There's an impaired experience in actually playing the game because the ball reacts differently in cold temperatures. So the bounce, the speed, and the spin of the ball is decreasing, and that affects the overall quality of our experience. I'd like to direct you to the um, information that is associated with the photo. That information is called metadata. And as you can see in that metadata or that description, these photos were actually taken in December of 2018. This is when we first started to notice the extreme temperatures of coldness in the bubble. I took those photos because of uh, how humorous the situation was at the time. Now we're in our fifth year of extreme cold temperatures and the situation is no longer humorous. The cold has made these conditions very difficult and we have repeatedly asked both the programming staff at Oak Bay as well as the entire center to address these issues. This is all while our rental fees have increased and the conditions have worsened. And it's for those reasons that I strongly recommend that we upgrade this heating system. Um, we think that the heating system is not only just about comfort, it's about providing a safe, a healthy environment for playing tennis and connecting with others. Especially in the last three years, we have seen that tennis has been one of the few places where people have been able to connect. I also believe this strongly aligns with the Council's delivery aspiration to enhance the quality of life for us and to foster community health and resiliency. Thank you for your time. Thanks for listening to my perspective. Thank you very much, Ms. Riel. Are there other members of the public who wish to address us? Please come forward. Same process, just your, yeah, hit the button and then your name and municipality of residence and Hi, welcome. I'm uh, Christy Ulmer and I am an Oak Bay resident. I am at 946 Bing Street. And uh, I want to echo what Katherine Ryle just presented to you. It's been going on five years. It's a long time. And um, we don't have alternatives. And I think that's one thing that, you know, and there's, there's a lot of people who are like 
my age and older playing tennis and it's super important for us for our agility to keep healthy keep out of the hospitals um, it's really important to have some kind of recreation there and I wanted to support you to um, go forward with this and I wanted to point out a few other things that um, Catherine did not it's not good for our instructors like I have seen our instructors wear gloves toques and heated vests well, they're trying to teach, and that's just not right. It's not safe for them. Um, and I also know some um, women who have stopped playing in the small bubble because they just find it too cold for them, and they're, they're afraid of injury. Um, and there's a lot of seniors that are playing tennis. You wouldn't believe it, but there are. Um, she covered that. I just don't, I don't want to repeat what Catherine has said. Um, uh, and I have a question for you. Uh, I hope you know the answer to this. But what percentage of Oak Bay revenue does the tennis represent? So all questions come to me, and oh. I, get to, I get to redirect them. Uh, and Mr. Meikle may not have that answer for you, but uh, do you know what, in terms of the, the revenues? Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, through you. I, I don't have that in front of me, sorry, in terms of percentage of, of overall revenues. Uh, we have sort of three, I would say, three major revenue centers between fitness, well, actually four, fitness, aquatics, arena, and tennis. Uh, and they're all fairly equal in, in the amount they bring in in total. So um, it, it can ebb and flow a little bit. But uh, certainly the arena and tennis have somewhat less expenses because of the rental-based uh, nature of those facilities. So uh, they do operate a little bit different than both fitness and aquatics would. Thank you for that. Go ahead. A anecdotally, I have, I have heard that the tennis is uh, a pretty big revenue um, generator for the rec center. Um, so I think that that's part of, you know, the impetus to, to keep the bubbles and to maintain them. Um, I, for the last about seven years, have run a group that play every Sunday, and we are now three courts, and we have been three courts for the last five years. And that's about $7,000 a year that we bring forward to um, to the recreation center. And there's one other thing, somebody mentioned about the moisture in the bubble, I can't remember who. Yeah, so it's not so much as you're gonna slip on it, um, although it has, you've, we've had to dodge bubbles in the, in the um, bubble. It, it's your ball gets wet and then it's, it's useless. So it, it was a really big issue and so we fixed one thing but created another. Um, so I, those are my comments. I just wanted to really support um, the director here that to go ahead and please vote for um, approving the budget for us. It's only 10% of, of the sewer thing. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, somebody else, go ahead, please come forward. This is the last of our registered, I think, uh, people, but if anybody online wishes to uh, address us on this matter, you're, you're welcome to raise your hand or hit star nine if you're calling in. Welcome. And same, same process, just your name and municipality of residence. Uh, Graham Black. I live in Oak Bay. I'm just down the street at 1187 Hampshire Road. I um, echo what my friends say. I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, the only thing I wanted to address was your suggestion about turning it into an outdoor court. And I think you got s some questions about... Um, the usage of indoor versus outdoor courts. In the greater Victoria area, currently you have the seven courts in Oak Bay for indoors. Uh, Cedar Hill has four courts, and then Panorama has four courts, and that is the total number. There are some at Bear Mountain, but I haven't included them. I'm not familiar with it. But that is the total number of indoor courts that I'm aware of in the greater Victoria area. When you go to outdoor courts, they're all the way the place. However, um, if you turn it into an outdoor court, it will get used as outdoor courts do, which is July, August, and most of September are reliable. Um, May and June are usually questionable. So for example, um, when we do our indoor court booking, we usually try and stay indoors for um, May and June just because it's going to be hit and miss as to whether or not it rains. If it rains, uh, the water 
tennis court surfaces are not very porous. Uh, the rain stays on there a long time, and uh, unless the sun is out, um, squeegeeing is not an option. I'm not sure if you have any questions there, but basically for um, October through to the end of April at least, people are, all the play is pretty much indoors. You can drive by Henderson, you can drive by um, Windsor Park, and you just aren't going to see people on the tennis courts. Um, even on a sunny day, they won't be there because it's just too, uh, too cold to um, dry up the water that sits on the courts. I'm not sure if you have any questions of me about that or... I don't think so. No, that's good. Thank you, Mr. Black. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any other members of the public who wish to address council on this matter? Uh, I have a Mr. Zelka online. You can unmute yourself, state your name and municipality of residence, and welcome to the meeting. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, uh, uh, Chair, for the opportunity to be able to speak on this matter. Uh, did I hear correctly that uh, there would be uh, quite a number of uh, greenhouse gas reductions as a result of this uh, infrastructure upgrade? I just wanted to, uh, first of all, con confirm my understanding before I continue. That is correct, yes. Uh, that's absolutely wonderful. I understand uh, Oak Bay um, has been greenhouse gas, uh, uh, um, uh, I guess, neutral uh, since 2015, and since 2015, greenhouse gas negative. And most of those greenhouse gas uh, uh, reductions and uh, uh, have resulted primarily from the um, changes to the parks, rec, and culture facilities. Uh, I just wanted to confirm that uh, going forward that there will be continuing to, to measure the re continuing reductions uh, in greenhouse gas reductions uh, uh, um, as, as evidenced by the work, the excellent work done by Oak Bay Parks, Rec and Culture, and that these numbers would contribute to, uh, and also be advertised going forward. Um, I just, I again, want to congratulate Oak Bay Parks and Rec on this going forward, and I would hope that uh, council would support it, in particular on its contributions to Oak Bay continuing its its uh, drawdown of, uh, of greenhouse gases. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zalka. I didn't hear a question in that one, so I'll take it as the comment. Uh, I think you I think you highlighted your points quite clearly there, so thank you for that. Um, are there any other members of the public who wish to address council on this matter before I get to motions? don't see any other hands popping up, so I am going to come back to this table. I'll move receipt. Moved and seconded. <laughs> Thank you. I don't usually discuss or debate receipt of reports, so I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed? Did I see a hand over here? Did you have a question before we get to the motion? Is there, I saw your hand no, pop up. No, I was going to make another Oh, you can go ahead if you wish. No, no, I'll let Councillor Grayson continue. This is a Canadian gunfight here. No, no, after you. Somebody uh, I'll make the uh, recommendation from staff that um, we, uh, where am I, uh, that MGM Mechanical Limited, in accordance with their, be awarded um, the tender for OBC, OBRC 08-2022, a submission in the amount of $282,676.30 plus GSD. Moved and seconded. So the motion is live on the floor. Is there any debate on this motion? We've got questions. Yeah, go ahead. I'll go to you, Councillor uh, Green, and then Watson, since you're a part of the motion. Yes, I just want to thank Mr. Makel for a comprehensive report, but especially the members of the public who, who came out tonight to share their feelings and concerns, and the photographs are helpful, and they, they clearly demonstrate why this is an important issue. And um, Oak Bay Rec is well known for its tennis activity, and I think we would be, we would be completely remiss if we did not support this um, recommendation. So thank you, and I will support, obviously, the motion. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just like to follow up on that. Just uh, first of all, to acknowledge the, fr the, uh, the patience of the tennis playing community as we have worked through this problem um, systematically over a long period of time. But I also want to acknowledge the staff for their hard work to diligently come up with a workable solution after experiencing a number of problems, technological and otherwise. So uh, I will be supporting the motion and I'm really pleased to see the introduction of this new, uh, this testing of this Tech, well, it's it's tested technology, but this particular technological application for solving this problem, and um, yes, big thanks all round. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Any other discussion on the motion? Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. 
Thank you, Worship. Just speaking in favor of the of the motion that's on the floor, um, and and I. Th- I I just like to bring up the point that I I think that it's going to be a real challenge for the district in the future to you know as we've seen with so many different capital projects and so many budget line items today council will be faced with some pretty tough decisions when budget time arrives next month and I think it's going to be really challenging to deal with upkeep and maintenance of of facilities like that irrespective of what uh, recreational activity they pertain to. I guess what I would say is is that um, I, the the key point in as fa- that factors into my decision making, aside from just the use of the facility, um, is uh, as Mr. Meikle has pointed out, uh, the opportunity to offset greenhouse gas emissions, the opportunity to uh, bring the facility up to a more uh, you know efficient and modern standard, offset those costs, um, and become more carbon neutral. Um, is a key consideration to my mind equally is equally as important no more or less so than the actual usage of the facility itself so I just like to commend staff for you know conducting that analysis having that information available Mr. Meikle's comments about further efficiencies available as part of the rec center complex overall uh, I think these are the things that we need to be casting our minds to as uh, as as a council so I think it, this would be a challenging conversation to have, irrespective of the being a very well used facility. Um, you know, these these cost overruns and these and these uh, and these these inflationary costs are going to be very difficult for the district to wrangle with. But it also needs to be balanced against the uh, the possibility of you know greenhouse gas offsets and just a cleaner community. So, thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you to the motion. Go ahead, Councillor Patterson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I also will support the motion, but just following up on some of Councillor Appleton's comments, uh, it it can be very difficult, and I know we do hear, certainly from tennis players, but from other users of the rec center, that um, the fees are revenue producers for Oak Bay, and I just I just want to um, state clearly that. We, we are very fortunate. We do have higher uh, higher users, number of users in this in the in the district and for those visiting, especially when we have more tennis bubble room than other municipalities have. Um, so that it's 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 great, but there it's still um, the the overall recreation facilities are an expense center to the district, and this district does we we subsidize it to a high per capita um, expands as compared to some of the other the other districts and I think yes it's going to be difficult with the pressure on our budgets because of the rise in the cost of labor and materials and all of the um, the needs in Oak Bay but especially with Parks and Rec it's also the um, whether we allocate the funding to basically user pay facilities or the parks, which are available to all members of the public and not on a user pay basis. So, um, the, you know, these are things that certainly uh, in the staff are, are tracking more of this now. And so those are things that we will have to be cognizant of because our, our parks and playgrounds also, um, which are not user pay based, are in um, need of significant upgrading also. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, thanks. Just, just going on with that, I, I hear what Councillor Patterson is saying, but I will say, um, to staff's credit, that um, Oak Bay happens to have the best um, user pay ratio um, in the whole province, um, and we're so we're we're like other other organ other recreational facilities look to us um, to see the kind of things that we're doing, and I think that's kudos to staff. Um, but I do hear what you're saying about about the uh, parks also need money too. But I think it's important to note that we do have a very good user pay ratio, um, and again, um, other other recreation facilities look to us for that. And I know we're a little bit off topic, and I, I apologize. It's okay. Thank you, Councillor Breathwaite. Um, just before we call the question on this, uh, sounds like everybody's speaking in favor. Uh, is just uh, I would just like to express on behalf of the council uh, uh, appreciation for the patience of the users of those facilities. Uh, we appreciate, as you as pointed out, uh, fixing one problem, f- you know, causing another problem, and working through uh, what l- appeared to be a fairly simple solution and turned out not to be. I thought the sealing of the pipe would be, would solve the issue quite easily, and it obviously didn't turn out that way. So. 
um, and uh, to staff. I think one of the, the key things here is uh, just talking about part restoration culture. This is part of our obligation for maintenance. Um, you know, one of the things that, as we talk about these user fee pieces and the utilization and, and those things, it really does come down our obligation to maintain all of our facilities in a way that is attractive to people and makes them usable. So I appreciate it has not been that way for, for some time in those bubble, in that one th uh, court bubble. Uh, so thank you for your patience as we sort of work through this, but we do uh, recognize that as a, as a necessity. I, uh, and I do, I do want to recognize um, for, for many decades now that this the municipality has one of the few areas that we've actually invested in maintenance properly for our capital infrastructure has been in the parks, rec, and culture side of the equation. Um, and uh, watching the, the, the debate going on on Crystal Gardens right now is interesting. It's two years older than our rec center is, um, and so significantly more work has gone into maintaining things. So it's really critical, and I think this is just one of those investments that we make to make sure that it's usable and attractive for people. So very supportive and very appreciative that this is finally back with a, with a solution, not just a definition of a problem. So thank you for that. Uh, with that, I'm ready to call the question. All right, all those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed? That carries. Uh, tomorrow, let's be installed. Is that right, Mr. Meekle? <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to stick around, but we have very little more to do. So you're welcome to stay or leave as you see fit. But thank you very much for coming out and speaking to us. Uh, we have, uh, I'm just going to wait for Councillor Smart to come back in the room. Oh, there she is. I think that's it, so we're all ready to go again. We're on to just item number seven, which is public input at the call of the chair. Uh, is there any, any new business that people wish to raise tonight? Okay. <laughs> uh, then with nothing there, uh, just on the record here is, our, is a notice of motion that will be coming to the February 27th meeting for consideration. Uh, it's here for, for public notice and council's notice. Um, and the other piece of this is just correspondence from other governments or agencies. And so we are here to uh, basically just to receive that uh, formally. And that's what I mentioned in my comments at the beginning that this is the, uh, the grant that's being I'll move received. Receipt. Moved and seconded. I don't need to really debate on the receipt, I don't think, but good news all around. We're looking forward to what the amount actually turns out to for us. Um, and that will certainly facilitate some more broad discussions at the, at the budget meeting, I'm assuming. Uh, okay, so all those in favor of receipt? Move. Yeah. Any opposed? Not opposed. That carries. Uh, um, that is I it will for the have to move the whole thing, right? You have yeah. to read the whole thing. Um, I'll move that the meeting be closed in accordance with section 91I and E of the community charter as the following items will be discussed. I, the receipt of ad advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. E, the acquisition, deposition, disposition, sorry, or expropriation of land or improvements if the council considers that disclosure could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second. Seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? That moves us in camera. Were you here for a... Oh, we're not talking about it tonight. It was just, it's just on the agenda for the uh, for notice. It's here next February week. February 27th. Yep. Okay. Uh, sorry, two weeks, correct. Sorry, February 27th. Nope. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>